Let's spend about 10 minutes talking Kansas State football, basketball, and recruiting on KSO Today, a free daily podcast brought to you by K-State Online. It's February 3rd, 2020. This is KSO Today, and the Kansas City Chiefs are indeed Super Bowl champions. You know, I thought about spending some time talking about the Chiefs' accomplishment today, but whenever I get into them, whether it's, you know, on Twitter or the message board or, or this kind of stuff, or use blanket statements like congratulating Chiefs fans, I always have a few that hop in and remind me that they're not all Chiefs fans and that I shouldn't uh, group everyone into one one thing that way. So I always think it's funny when I get those notes or complaints because I'm pretty openly an L.A. Chargers fan, not a Chiefs fan, and certainly understand, you know, that the entire K-State fan base isn't fans of the Chiefs. But a lot of you are listening You know, and all of that said, if you are a fan, you know, and you've been patiently waiting for a result like last night's for a long time, I'm just very, very happy for you. Um, I hope you truly have and will continue to enjoy the moment. I'm envious, jealous, all those things, but I think it's, you know, it's really cool for so many people that I love and know, and I'm happy for you. So enjoy that today for sure. Uh, All that said, I guess it's on on to K-State talk here on KSO today. I want to talk a lot about tonight's game, you know, with number one Baylor here in Bramlage Coliseum with a ton of help from KSU underscore fan on Twitter and the info already released in the preview and prediction for tonight's game, which is already on the site. But a few other topics first, I do want to say thank you as always to both People State Bank and Legacy Insurance for sponsoring, you know, the KSO show, KSO Today, really everything we do like this. PSB, as I regularly tell you, does have 10, 10 branch locations which I can't ever not run those words together, in the state of Kansas. 17 ATMs, six of which are in Manhattan. I'll tell you what, we drove by a lot of those PSB locations and billboards out in western Kansas last week when we were in Colorado to see Jake Rubley. So lots of locations throughout the state. They've been great to us. Please do check them out. Some things to look for on the site. DY has released a brand new class of 2021 football big board this morning. He also has an update on the past weekend visit of Lawrence High, not Free State, but Lawrence High running back Devin Neal sitting in our admin right now waiting for me to edit. Uh, Hopefully by the time you hear this, I've already done my job and that's available for you to read. So I appreciate Derek being all over that. K-State took a commitment last week we talked about on KSO now from Jaden Williams, but he is listed as an athlete. Certainly could be a running back, no doubt about that, but Devin Neal probably the top running back target for K-State on the board and that's who they had on this past weekend. You can read about his visit on K-State Online. There's lots coming this week with National Signing Day. It is the late one, which will have, you know, little to no major action for K-State. But there'll be stuff to follow, of course, this week. And we do have a football availability, which I think is very exciting, on, I believe, February 5th. That's going to have a number of the early enrollees available to talk to us, which is really, really cool of K-State making that happen for us. Uh, We'll load up K-State Online with coverage of that day. And then, you know, the YouTube page and KSO with, you know, tons of videos talking to the early enrollees who are available to us. Some of them were probably at Tallgrass Tap House a few weeks ago when we talked to Taylor Brown on the KSO show. So I imagine it's a lot of a lot of those kids will be there and excited about that. The big news, well, it's not big news, the big topic today is K-State does play the number one team in college basketball tonight. The Baylor Bears will head to Manhattan, Kansas, part of Big Monday for ESPN at 8 o'clock tip-off in Manhattan. Baylor's played so, so well. A lot of this, virtually all of this information I'm going to share with you, of course, comes from the preview and prediction which is 99% done by KSU underscore fan on Twitter. Just going to throw some numbers at you uh, to show you what to expect tonight. A lot of these advanced statistics from fan, which I say this over and over again, but if these are numbers you're not familiar with yet, uh, I think it's it's worth doing so as a lot of the traditional statistics that you've seen in stories or on the internet or in newspapers for 30 or 40, 50, 60 years don't really tell the story anymore. So uh, Pace is interesting. He talks about how Scott Drew has basically developed Baylor into one of the slowest offenses in the Big 12. They certainly are this year. 63 possessions a game. That is the slowest in the Big 12. K-State's right in the middle. 67 possessions a game at fifth. Um, Baylor has the longest offensive possession on average in the Big 12 at 20 seconds. That's, of course, the last um, defensive possession. They have the shortest, which is interesting. But you look around, K-State offense against the Baylor defense. Baylor is number one in the Big 12 in points per possession defense. K-State's number nine. So it's going to be hard for K-State to score tonight, of course. Baylor is number two in field goal percentage defense. I mean, actual effective field goal percentage defense, the real number. Uh, K-State's only eighth. K-State turns it over seventh most. Well, 
they're the seventh worst at turning the ball over in the Big 12. Baylor's now gotten decent at forcing them. They're fourth. That used to be bad at that. Baylor dominates this whole matchup. Um, when you look down the lines up and down the, that KSU underscore fan shares with us. A couple of slight edges for K-State. The Wildcats shoot it a little bit better. Excuse me, defend it a little bit better than Baylor shoots it. So Baylor could have some issues scoring. K-State's also better defending the two than Baylor as scoring it. Turnover rate, K-State forces them at a very high rate. Third best in the Big 12, Baylor only turns it over. Second best in the Big 12, very little. So that's not a strength, but at least an area where K-State can compete for sure um, against Baylor. If you're looking at some other rankings, like the net ranking used, of course, for the NCAA tournament, Baylor's the number one team in the country, uh, I believe in the AP and the coaches poll. They're number two in the net. They're 6-0 and versus Tier 1 teams. They are, of course, a Tier 1 team, which K-State is 1-8 and eight against. Baylor has won 18 games in a row at this point. They are the best team in college basketball. Uh, any way you really slice it. And within those 18 straight wins, they have road wins uh, against the likes of Texas Tech, KU, Oklahoma State, Florida, and Iowa State in order. So they've won those five straight uh, you know, on other people's gyms during this 18-game stretch. I really think K-State's playing significantly better you know, than the Wildcats were uh, maybe a month ago, maybe two, th- two or three weeks ago. And I think K-State will stay relatively competitive against Baylor tonight, but I don't think that this K-State team is the one that snaps this Baylor's 18-game winning streak and wins, you know, a home game against the Bears when Texas Tech, KU, Oklahoma State, Florida, excuse me, Florida and Iowa State could not as of late. So I do like Baylor tonight. My official prediction for this one was 62-53. to 53. Beyond the score, it would be fascinated to see, you know, what happens is guys like Xavier Sneed, Cartier Jada, who have shot the ball just really, really poorly the last few games. They're playing hard. They're playing with effort, but they are they are shooting K-State out of games right now. Um, they've got to shoot better for K-State to have a chance. McCall McWain, the other you know of the hopeful big three going into the season, has played better the last three games or so, but still not at an incredibly game-changing level or really even a truly game-changing level. If K-State's going to win, you would hope they get significantly better performances from those three tonight. I'll be interested to watch you know how Dejuan Gordon uh, Montavious Murphy handle playing and starting against the number one team in the country. David Sloan, another newcomer, will almost certainly start again at point guards. You have three newcomers starting against this team. Antonio Gordon will come back tonight. Be interesting to see how he's used. He was only playing, you know, 11 to 14 minutes a game before his suspension, and it was off some injury. But me and Flanders and DY, I think, had an interesting talk about Antonio Gordon in the car on the way back from Colorado. Just how, you know, early in the season when Monty was hurt and K State really needed him, he was playing starter minutes, 28 to 32. Then when Monty got back and Antonio got dinged up, his minutes really drastically changed. So as he returns to the lineup and everyone within reason is healthy, uh, I'll be interested to see how many minutes a game KZ plays this kid, Antonio Gordon. Are they seeing him as a guy who's going to get, you know, 15 to 22, which is a lot for a freshman right now? Or does he slide back more into that 8 to 12 range, <clears throat> which I don't expect, but I think it'd be interesting to see if he is for lack of a better term, kind of that separated from the other two members of the freshman class. We know, barring injuries, foul trouble, et cetera, Dejuan and Monty are going to start, and they're going to play in that 25-minute range. Um, I do want to see where Antonio is coming off that suspension and tonight against the Baylor team. That's not as long as they typically are. doesn't play as much of that zone as you typically expect. It is a different Baylor team. So a length like Antonio Gordon could be valuable for K-State and perhaps even an advantage to some point. But I don't think he's going to be a big, big difference tonight. I just want to see how much he plays. I do really appreciate you taking the time to listen to this Monday's KSO today. We'll have episodes all week long, of course, Monday through Friday. Derek Young will handle at least two. I think he's going to do the Wednesday, Thursday ones really around football recruiting. Um, Flando has dealt with some personal stuff. We all love him and are thinking of him. Um, he's doing fine. He's good. Uh, hopefully we have him back, you know, maybe this week for Friday and do our first Flando Friday, but we really appreciate him and, and love him. Again, congrats to the Chiefs fans. To those who don't care, I'm sorry I'm talking about it, but I still am happy for those people. Appreciate you listening. Please do subscribe to our YouTube page if you're not already. It's helpful for our business, and all you have to do is hit subscribe. If you don't have a Google account, I guess you have to get one of those. That's not too much work, I don't think. I'd appreciate that. Um, same thing on Podbean if you want. If you don't subscribe to KSTED Online, we'd always love you to. I know it's we're going into off, an off season right now, and I'm not going to mislead you from a salesman perspective. It's probably not going to have the most content as we do during football and basketball. But we'll go out of our way to cover recruiting while it's not happening. I've referenced it three times now, just bragging about it at this point. But we did head to Colorado to see Jake Rubley last week. We will head to St. Louis this month to see K-State basketball commitments. Davion Bradford, a four-star player, and Luke Kasubke, another Rivals 150 member who's a three-star. And then throughout 
the spring, summer, whatever you call those months. Should we go into camps? Should we go into watch recruits? We will give you value on the site um, without just, you know, lists and, and the stuff that I already I will add to it as well. Actual news and recruiting coverage will happen on the site as well throughout the month. So thank you for listening. Thank you for your time. Hope you enjoyed this KSO Today.